Our speaker this morning, she's one of our staff ministers, and she brings to the podium the energy and the excitement in every talk that she delivers. In fact, I we lovingly call her Bubbly. Please help me welcome to the podium this morning, Reverend Sonia Davidson to deliver this morning's encouragement. Reverend Sonia. And thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lord. And thank you, Jennifer, for just setting the stage for this service. It has not been just wonderful. And the reading, oh my gosh, so inspired and exactly what we are about this morning. Because, and let me not forget those who are online, those who are in the sanctuary, I'm so happy to see you. We are here in our numbers as according to COVID regulations, no more. But we are also grateful to those who are online. And we welcome you to our hearts and to our center as well. Hmm. Oops. Okay. Now my talk, Everyday Heroes Living Life on Purpose. The month of October is significant for us in Jamaica for many reasons. Some know it's a rainy season, some know it's oh, hurricane season all, is almost over. But the most obvious on a national level is that it is the month we celebrate Heroes Day and honor those who are considered contributing to the national Good. While we have elevated a few people to the stature of national heroes, and numerous others have been acknowledged since then for contributing to the nation, I cannot help but remember all the millions of unsung heroes and heroines among us. A verse from this poem titled Elegy written in a country churchyard by Thomas Gray stands out for me. Those of you who are of my seniority will remember that we were compelled to learn it by heart. I remember only two lines, but they are the ones I am contributing this morning. But recently, I read it with a different mindset from the parroting that we did when I was a child. And I have understood it in a different way. It goes like this, the lines that I have chosen. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean view. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen, and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Read it if you wish, and you can. It is a very dark poem, which has, however, stood the test of time, perhaps because it reflects how some people may think of their lives in the twilight of their years. As they witness so many people dying, apparently, apparently unappreciated, and wondering if they too, despite their best efforts, will be remembered in the same way or not at all. Friends, I guess the human part of us, somewhere along the journey of life, may wonder if what we're doing is appreciated, if the effort makes sense. We may even feel discouraged at points, as obviously Mr. Gray of Gray's Elegy in a country churchyard felt. Perhaps Mr. Gray was writing, writing this poem at a time not unlike what the world is going through now, when so many people we know are dying, transitioning, whatever you prefer, and it was really getting to him. What can I say? People have to feel what they need to feel and express how they feel sincerely. But listen to another person's perspective on life and death. 
all men should strive before they die to discover what they are running from and to and why, said James Thunder. You see, friends, it is now while there is breath in us that we must know our purpose for living and live from what we know of it. When we do, there will be less temptation to be concerned about what people think, of what we are doing with our lives, or about how we will be remembered when we have parted company with this plane of existence. Life is a gift, and I do not intend to waste a moment of it in anything other than self-discovery. For this process of discovery never ends. Jesus the Master said of his passionate and successful healing ministry, not I, but the Father in me does the work. And from the Science of Mind textbook, page 419, I draw these words of inspiration. All the mystics have recognized the absolute unity of God and man. Within the infinite mind, each individual exists not as separated, but as a separate and distinct entity. We are a point of universal consciousness, which is God. We are not separated from life, neither is it separated from us, but we are separate entities in it, individualized centers of God consciousness." Unquote. The goal of self-discovery is the complete acceptance of this idea, for on it rests our fulfillment of our true purpose of being. Donald Curtis, Dr. Donald Curtis, Reverend Donald Curtis, a new thought luminary, teacher and writer says it this way, there is nothing that can deter the person who knows who he is or where he is going, unquote. Each of us will come to discover that the ultimate purpose of life is to live out that unique pattern or design of being which we are created to be. As we do not, as we will discover ourselves being able to make the greatest contribution to the greatest number of persons just by being ourselves. I like what Deepak Chopra said about his purpose in life. He said, to heal, it is to heal and make everyone who I come in contact with happier than when I met them. You see, it is not about what people feel about him per se, but about the effect his presence and actions are having on them. A light does not concern itself about people's opinion about it. It merely does what it, what it is its nature to be. A light allowing people to see the way. Here is a prayer which students have used to prepare for classes that Reverend Anne and I have taught for many years. It goes like this, infinite spirit, open my eyes that I may see, my ears that I may hear, my heart that I may love. Teach me all that is necessary for my spiritual growth. Show me what I may bring to this class today. It's impossible for me to recite these words without something shifting in me, I'm feeling it. If you would like, you may use it. In fact, I invite you to make this an assignment for this week. Allah. Who? <laughs> Reverend John. <laughs> you could change the words, this class, to this life. So it would go, show me what I may bring to this life today. These have been the last words I see as I leave my bedroom because I posted it on the wall near the doorway. 
I rely on such ideas to keep me on purpose. Remember, we are individualized centers of consciousness within the infinite mind, which is God. Just take in that for a moment. Individualized centers of consciousness within the infinite mind, which is God. Everyone, every single soul has a unique, specific purpose in life as unique as his or her fingerprints living from that individualized center within the mind of God. Yes, we are each born to be everyday heroes. Just think of all the spontaneous acts of kindness, each compassionate word of consolation, each humane gesture to a stranger passing by, each smile bestowed on a hooting taxi driver who butt in front of your car. Each time you stopped on a highway to help someone who appears to be in trouble. And on and on and on. I am sure if we take time to pause, each one of us remember these casual acts. They are the evidence that the hero lies in each one of us. We cannot help but be ourselves. It is our nature. These spontaneous acts of kindness may seem insignificant to us, but it's through them, it is through them that we reveal our divine nature. If I am a divine expression in the mind of God, what is my purpose in being here? What is God's intention for me, some may ask. <laughs> to this question, Dr. Ernest Holmes replies, and I speak through the science of mind textbook, he replies, the only intention God could have if man is an individual would be to let the individual, individual alone to discover himself or herself, obviously. In this discovery of self, man, woman, impresses the law which is sensitive, creative, and can only deduce, meaning it just have to accept what we say. So it, acts, it impresses the law with the images of his own belief about himself. And the law creates a form around these images. The law knows about us only what we know about ourselves. So if we know and know it over and over till we embody it. It is a part of the way we think naturally and spontaneously that we are individualized centers within the mind of God. Then the law begins to act and to demonstrate in our lives according to that belief. So friends, every moment that we live is a gift. Every moment is an opportunity. We are each born on purpose for a purpose. So we are intended to be part, to do our part in ensuring that this body, which universal spirit has entrusted to our care for the purpose of this lifetime, we are intended to ensure that it is well taken care of and the mind, which is our immortal gift, is guarded and expanded intentionally. Too few of us ever stand still long enough to contemplate the purpose of life. So many of us rarely give the idea a second thought. Do you know that living on purpose Knowing that your life has purpose is essential to health, to longevity, and the continuation of this incarnation at this time. So many people who have never been aware of the true purpose of living will themselves to death or lose the will to live. Our bodies are fueled by the energy of purpose. To live, we must feel that we have reason to live. 
This is purpose. To know that we have reason to live is purpose. We are free to choose how we see our purpose. If we limit our purpose only to the things that we have already done well, the things that we do or the things that we intend to do, we limit ourselves because we, will, we may fail to do them or to, acknowledge, to be acknowledged for doing them. Therefore, when this happens, we are at risk of becoming disillusioned with life or become so complacent that we become bored. There is nothing wrong with a gentle, a gentle restlessness of mind which says there's more to life than we are aware currently or that we are currently experiencing. In fact, it is most appropriate that from time to time we feel this little nudge which is aptly called divine discontent. I'm not sure who named it. I'm not sure if I would have named it that, but in some ways it's a good name. The supreme purpose of life is to grow, to evolve, to give access to the divine infinite potential within us that is eagerly forging its way into expression through us. Yes, each of us has a hero within, impatient to express. For most of us, the answer, what is my true purpose in life, comes by way of an unfolding process. For a select few, it is a dramatic revelation. For an even smaller number, the answer to that question seems to have been born with them at birth. Everyone comes to the revelation of their true purpose from a different angle. Life's purpose is indeed to discover and live out that unique divine design for being, which we each are. And Donald Curtis, New Thought author, says there is nothing that can deter a person who knows who he or she is or where he or she is going. So you may ask, what is the purpose of thinking about my purpose? I am busy. I am busy making a living. I volunteer in the community. I volunteer at church. My children keep me occupied. My husband is a handful. What more purpose could I serve? <laughs> I love this statement from Richard Living, a daily reading by Dr. Ernest Holmes and Dr. Raymond Charles Barker. He who rules his spirit has won a greater victory than the taking of a city. Hey, can you imagine that? Yes. We cling so tightly to the plans and goals chosen or that's thrust upon us by our own beliefs that often we neglect our spiritual well-being. We don't leave time for self-discovery. Yes, each of us has the potential to be everyday heroes if we allow it. Living life on purpose for a purpose is a role that only we can fulfill for ourselves. In the process of living out, we set numerous goals and achieve many. Some of them give us a sense of accomplishment and pleasure, but after a while, hmm, what's next? And when the boredom sets in, divine discontent is spirit's way of nudging us forward towards our true purpose in life. The poison and security which is experienced by those who have identified their life's purpose permits them to move freely and confidently through every threatening or potentially distracting event. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, proclaimed, and we know it's familiar to all of us, and I love it, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, and ye, and ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. In other words, anything you set your mind to, God will... God is there, the infinite is there to make it happen. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, 
and ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. You have to think it first. So many of us spend a great part of our lives chasing goals without stopping to ask ourselves, is this in keeping with my purpose in life? Or am I reacting to fear implanted by my acceptance of what the group has led me to believe if I don't? All people dream dreams. Most have desires to advance in life. Far less have vis a vision of their purpose. Purpose is the underlying upthrust which supports the ship of life, so to speak. Purpose takes its energy and drive its fuel from the realm of possibilities. The infinite mind which underpins all, the kingdom of God which Jesus the master tells us is neither here nor there. It is at hand, it is within man. Elsewhere he says, yes, it is at hand. But I like the verse which says it is within man. Look it up. The journey towards deliberate self-discovery self is within our everyday spiritual practices, all of which turn our attention inward. Meditation, basking in the silence, listening for the small still voice as we seek its advice, affirmative prayer, contemplating the divine nature and its relationship to all things and all people, including ourselves, recording our insights in words. There is no limit to all the ways that we can advance our spiritual practice. Just do it, do it. And of course, coming to classes where we turn over ideas, where we share where we open ourselves to be a, a channel through which wisdom flows, wisdom which we were not even aware was in our minds. All of these are spiritual practices. So when we dedicate ourselves to an idea which inspires us, our entire life takes on the energy of that idea. So be inspired by knowing that truly we are indeed centers of divine mind within the mind of God. So when, you know, this is so important because when we neglect the spirit, the inner work towards self-discovery, we are unable to choose the goals which are compatible with our true process. So instead we feel the pressure of the good deeds which we, are, we have imposed upon ourselves. We feel burdened, we feel tired because it is not what we really, really, really want or should be doing. On the other hand, when we hold fast to our purpose, everything falls into place. We pack sensibly, so to speak. We begin to have desires which correspond to that which fulfills it, and spontaneously discard these desires, beliefs, emotions, aims, and experiences which do not fit into our life's purpose. I have a short, simple story to share which demonstrates that even when we have demonstrated, developed some proficiency in our use of the principles of, of our teaching, the science of mind, we may not always use it as our first line of defense. However, a firmly rooted decision to live from our purpose will be the ballast by which we keep an even keel in life, in the oceans of life. It is my story, but it could be anyone's story. I almost argued myself out of what was to be the most enjoyable and satisfying visit I have ever made to another country. As a relatively new minister, I had flirted with the idea of going to a minister's conference in the USA, but had not focused my attention on it until much nearer to the date of the event. When I was faced with the reality that I was going, my mind became flooded with a chain of fleeting, limiting thoughts, which in retrospect would have hindered me. I thought this couldn't have come at a worse time. I have several payments that I do in March. When I don't work, 
I don't get paid. Who will take care of my patients when I'm away? Who is going to handle my personal affairs? Where is all that money going to come from so fast? See that? I decided then and there that any decision I would take in life would be on the basis of preference and not limitation. So I immediately reminded myself about my of my purpose to grow spiritually through ministry and went into treatment for right action and clarity. The answer came in the form of a smoldering desire which grew into a definite intention. Then a certainty followed almost immediately by a chain of spontaneous reactions, events, and arrangements. As my enthusiasm grew, events, arrangements, money, everything fell into place with precision. The trip was perfect from beginning to end. In the meeting, there were many senior ministers whose books we have, no, with books with whom we have now become familiar. Several of them have transitioned by now. I realized that I had been in bondage to my habitual lifestyle. The same law which allowed me to think myself into bondage is the law which freed me of my own bidding. When we live out our lives in the context of our purpose, we trim the baggage from our lives, we begin to travel lighter and more streamlined and make less detours because we know where the highlight highway leads us. We move full stream ahead. So, according to Iyanla Van Zant, a popular author and motivational speaker, the one who is traveling on purpose packs light, which makes the journey easy. So when we are traveling on purpose, we pack truth, courage, and faith, unquote. So friends, I have no doubt that most of you are, who are listening to me are in fact living out your purpose. You are indeed everyday heroes. But by making a promise to stay firmly on the path, of our purpose, the journey becomes more delightful. This is the nature of the divine life, which is the hero that lies within. So friends, let us agree together to take some time to rediscover ourselves as we go within to speak to that quiet place, to the, go within to that quiet place and speak from the silence. Sometimes we hear that silence thundering at us. Sometimes it is just a deep reassurance. So friends, everyone who sets out on purpose to grow through self-discovery and by a determination to live on purpose for the supreme purpose has set out on the hero's journey who has set us on this hero's journey, has joined the ranks of everyday heroes and even the ones who we recall who have been named as our national heroes, the mystic of the ages. We have that in common, that we are living on purpose as they did. So purpose is what gets us out of bed each day. It is what carries us forward when things seem less than ideal. With purpose comes clarity, diligence, dedication, commitment, steadfastness, tenacity, enthusiasm, vitality. Through all of this, we feel centered, anchored, and secure. Purpose, I say, puts fire in the belly, food on the table, peace in the soul, and joy in the heart. So let us use that energy, that passion, that purpose, that heroism to do this blessing that I'm going to read. And I ask you as often as you can, remember that heroes 
are the light that shines and joins the flame that is blazing to move humanity forward into that great new age. And I read a blessing. I think a kind thought for all the world. I declare here and now that all the world is happy and blessed. So I'm going to break it down. And I want you to join me and say it from your heart. Oh. I think a kind thought for all the world. I think a kind thought for all the world. I declare here and know, I declare here and know that all the world is happy and blessed. That all the world is happy and blessed. I salute the hero in you. I salute the hero in you. Please make eye contact with somebody and say, I salute the hero in you. You are indeed living on purpose for a purpose. Namaste. Wow, thank you, Reverend Sonia. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, friends, she has encouraged us not to waste any time here on earth. The goal is one of self-discovery. And we are individualized centers of consciousness within the infinite intelligence which is God. What the law knows about us is only what we know about ourselves. And knowing your life has purpose fuels the energy to live our divine design for being. My friends, commit to enhance your spiritual practices and know that we are each born to be everyday heroes. Thank wow. you. Wow. Thank you, Jennifer. You have captured it.